The following program presents theories about an historical event that is shrouded in mystery. It contains archival footage, reenactments, and dramatizations, which invite you, the viewer, to draw your own conclusions. Nearly 40 years ago, on an early December evening, something strange is spotted in the sky above the village of Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. What does it look like? Radiating off for the back or side was a blue light, much like a welder's light. Something went across the sky, it was just like a big fireball. And it plunged into the ground. It, it scared me. It really scared me. Come down out of the clouds, my daughter and I both saw it at the same time. Some believe they have witnessed a UFO crash. They say local officials and the military tried to conceal the mysterious object. There was army trucks, cars, they had the rifles, all kind of military people that were coming in. The military walked up in front of my car. I was told not to go into the woods. But since 1965, the U.S. government has maintained that nothing at all came down outside Kecksburg. Others contend that natural science can account for the eyewitness reports. What people saw was uh, a very bright fireball meteor over Lake Erie. Well, this was an intensely bright object. Why do people have so many different interpretations of the same event? The Project Blue Book file on the event basically said that the search continued to about 2 a.m., that nothing was found. Skeptics claim these explanations are part of a conspiracy to cover up the truth. Something landed, or something came down through those trees and, and, and hit the ground. Why wouldn't our own government come out and tell us that was a satellite or a missile, it was Russian, or one of our own? Now I'm beginning to wonder what it actually was. So what was so important down in those woods that the military didn't want those people to see? These are American citizens who deserve this information, who have every right to this information. Right down through here. Right down through here. See, this wasn't here. This is all grown in. This was an open field like this. And I went down. 79-year-old Bill Bullybush is a lifelong resident of the Kecksburg area. For more than 20 years, he kept a secret from his neighbors in this small rural community. That one December night, he believes he saw an unidentified flying object over Kecksburg. Little did he know that many of his fellow citizens believed they saw the same thing. Nobody can change my mind. I know what I'm saying. And that, that was it. December 9th, 1965. It's about 4.30 p.m., just before sunset in Kecksburg, which is about 45 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Bill Bullybush has just come home from work. As his wife prepares dinner, Bullybush heads outside to work on his pride and joy, a 1964 Chevy Corvair. He listens to the car's CB radio while he tinkers under the dash. And I heard guys from Ohio talking on there, and they were jabbering, they were coming east. And they, they said that they seen this thing too going east, you know, and they wondered what it was. Bullybush suddenly hears a hissing sound. He looks up catching a glimpse of a glowing object in the sky. To get a better look, he gets out of his car and can plainly see the bright object overhead. Yeah, I watched it, and it, it was just like a big fireball. Then it was headed towards the mountain. Then it come back a pretty good piece, and the first thing I knew, it made a U-turn and went down into Kecksburg, down in the woods there. Less than two miles away, 16-year-old Robert Blystone sits on the back porch of his parents' home. He also spots the strange light. It was just a round fireball. 
you know, flames all around it with these different color vapors behind it. And it just started slowing down like it was being controlled. And the next thing I know, it's beyond the hill where I can't see it no more, but I, then I started seeing like smoke, dust coming up out of the woods. So I kind of fear it kind of crashed. Across town, Bill Bullybush jumps into his Corvair and drives to the Kecksburg woods. At the top of the hill overlooking the woods, Bully Bush stops, then turns on his parking lights so he can see into the valley. A strong smell of sulfur permeates the air. As Bully Bush makes his way down the hill, he hears a sizzling sound. I could see it down in the valley there, and uh, that's, that's where it, it landed, right in there, and knocked the top of the trees out and everything else. So I stood there for, well, I'd say, 15 minutes looking at it. Meanwhile, 12 miles away in nearby Greensburg, the switchboard at radio station WHJB jumps to life. WHJB, could you hold on one second? WHJB. Office manager Mabel Massa answers the sudden flurry of phone calls. People were telling me something fell in Kecksburg and uh, somebody said it was a ball of fire, somebody said it was a plane wreck. There were just a number of stories that kept coming in. The phones just kept ringing. When Mabel fields a call from someone claiming to have seen a UFO outside Kecksburg, she hands the phone to John Murphy, the station's news director. Hey, John. Yeah. I said, here, you take this one. John Murphy, all right, what what what'd you see? And he came back and he said to me, he said, this is a big one, kid. I'm going to Kecksburg. Wait, wait. Your camera? Thanks, kid. See you later. WHJB. Back at the crash site, Bill Bullybush is trying to decide whether to move closer to the smoldering object partially embedded in the ground. The color of it was like a burnt orange. It was burnt from the front clear to the back. And I could see this ring around the back of it. And it looked like Egyptian writing on the back of it. There was no windows in it, no seams, no rivet marking. It was just a solid piece. Bully Bush fears the smoking object may explode. So after 15 minutes, he retreats. On the way to his car, he hears curious residents already gathering outside the woods. Bully Bush climbs into his Corvair and returns home. Within an hour, the area has been cordoned off by a growing number of military personnel and local officials. They refuse to let onlookers get closer to the mysterious object. Though they have a limited view, the group can see a plume of blue smoke rising from the forest. 19-year-old Bill Weaver is out for a joyride in Kecksburg when he hears a radio bulletin describing a strange light in the sky. Intrigued, he heads to the south side of the woods, an area that has not been secured by the military. Weaver finds a handful of people there, peering into the wooded valley. We thought it was a Russian satellite at first, 